the 2020s under construction. Let's begin by expanding this guiding metaphor of our conference. When we say that the 2020s are under construction, we implicitly envision the future as a building. This vision raises a variety of urgent and fascinating questions. Who are the architects, the builders, and the prospective residents of this structure, the future? Who will have access to it and who will be denied entry? What type of building might it be? What environmental, social, and political pressures must the wood, glass, steel, and mortar of the future take into account in its construction? Finally, what was on the site previously? What has been removed to make way for the future? Now, these are all, of course, metaphorical questions. They don't have simple answers. And really, my overarching goal here today is merely to encourage us to think through them uh, as we turn toward the future as a project under construction collectively. In order to do so, we first need an image of what that collective future in the 2020s and beyond might be. Here I'm going to take a page from a thinker whom I admire quite a lot, the anthropologist and philosopher Bruno Latour, in particular a recent book that he's written called Down to Earth. Now in Down to Earth, Latour is grappling with the myriad social, political, and environmental challenges that define the era of climate change and what he calls the Anthropocene more generally. He argues that in order for all terrestrials, all human and non-human residents of the earth to forge new futures together, we need to pioneer new ways of dwelling together. If the future is a building, it must have space for all of earth's residents, both human and non-human alike. So as we endeavor to forge new forms of coexistence, new mutual dwelling places in the near future, the past offers both opportunities and stumbling blocks. This has become especially vivid to me in my own research. I'm trained as a cultural anthropologist, but lately I've been introducing myself as an anthropologist who was obligated to become a historian who wanted to be an architect. And I lead a research group that examines the myriad legacies of empires, in particular, the Habsburg and the Ottoman empires in the present, the pressures that the past continues to have on lives today and indeed in the future. Whether it be Viennese tort or soap operas starring bygone sultans, the Habsburg and Ottoman empires are incredibly alive today, incredibly present rather than past. They bring to mind a famous uh, bon mot a famous quote from the novelist uh, and Nobel laureate William Faulkner, the past is never dead, it isn't even past. I think this is true across the globe. And so as we endeavor to forge and to construct the 2020s together, we must learn to turn to the past as a blueprint for the future. In what follows today, I want to make three more specific points about this. First, I want to examine the importance and the lessons that a specific past, that of socialist Yugoslavia, has to offer for the future under construction. Secondly, and more generally, more abstractly, I want to examine how processes of erosion and weathering over time can offer an open-oriented orientation to the future ahead of us. Finally, and thirdly, I want to examine how a multiplicity of different pasts continue to exert pressure simultaneously on the present and for the future. I do all of this by way of a rather serendipitous anecdote drawn from my daily life here in Zagreb, Croatia, the capital city of Croatia. And I reverse the guiding metaphor of our conference by examining a past that has remained literally buried underneath a construction. Now, all across Zagreb, my hometown, the capital of Croatia, small portable kiosks sell a variety of conveniences, 
to passers-by, pedestrians, commuters on their way to work or back home, cold beverages, newspapers, snacks, and the like. Until recently, one such kiosk was right here in my neighborhood, and this is an image of where it, it, it used to stand, across from a park near a major farmer's market, and also near the near the kindergarten where I often drop my children off in the morning. Last year, uh, sometime just before the pandemic, uh, a few months, I suppose, this kiosk was removed for reasons unknowing. Now, when I went to the spot, and I continue to go to this spot frequently, mostly because the best coffee in my neighborhood is offered by a cafe that's right next to what is now an empty lot. In fact, as you can see, I got my coffee there this morning. Now, when I returned uh, for the first time after this kiosk had been removed, as I was awaiting my coffee, I shuffled through the dirt and dust that you see here in the spot where this kiosk used to be. To my surprise, I found a few coins. As I picked them up, I recognized that these were not familiar kuna, that is to say, Croatian currency that we use in our everyday lives. They were covered with a patina of grime and rust, as you see here. And I also noticed that they had Cyrillic as well as Latin script on them. I had found dinars, the currency of socialist Yugoslavia, a polity that ceased to exist some 30 years ago and hasn't been the ruling power in Zagreb since the early 1990s. Now, over the past year, I've discovered some 20 or 30 of these coins. Indeed, my children have come to think it's a sort of game when we go to buy daddy's coffee to dig through this dirt and, 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 and grime in search of these rather peculiar objects. As you can see here, not all of them are easily legible, though usually one can make out their denomination and some version of the, the script and the seal of former Yugoslavia. A patina of rust and grime marks them as objects out of place and out of time, no longer participants in daily live life. Here's a close-up of one of the Yugoslav dinars that I found in this empty lot. Now, nearly three decades on from the end of socialist Yugoslavia and Croatian independence, this particular past is difficult to find in the city today. Socialist era buildings remain, but the names of streets, plazas, and avenues have changed. Cyrillic script, a marker of a time when Croatian and Serbian were, in my opinion, rightly considered a single language, is only found nowadays on certain, uh, certain tombstones in neglected cemeteries, or perhaps on the coins in a dusty lot near one's home. What might this catch of coins teach us about the future under construction? First, the coins are reminders of a political culture that no longer exists today. Socialist Yugoslavia still has many lessons for the present and for the future under construction. We can take inspiration from the third way movement, the alternative globalization of the non-aligned movement, which sought to navigate between the difficult political waters of the Cold War and create alliances between and among uh, global, the global South. Yugoslavia, Egypt, Indonesia, India, and beyond were part of this movement. We can also take more general inspiration from the ideal of solidarity as a product of and an effect of equality and vice versa that socialism promoted. Finally, more practically, we can look to some of the political economic measures that Yugoslavia instituted, notably worker-run factories in which the very distinction between labor and management was reduced, thereby producing a workplace in which the sort of hierarchies of capitalism were not uh, characteristic or present in most forms of interaction. Now, we shouldn't whitewash Yugoslavia's failures, in particular, the divisions among its constituent peoples that it eventually produced and that eventually led to its dismantling and war. And yet, I think that socialist Yugoslavia suggests a worthy template for dwelling together in the future, and we have much to learn from it as we move forward into the 2020s. 
there are other lessons to be gleaned from these discarded coins. And this is my second main point. As you've seen, the coins only exist to the degree that they have endured through and because of environmental inclemency. Their patina of rust is an effect of years of water, of rain, of oxygen, of exposure to wind and the elements, heat and cold. In the time of climate change, we all require inspiration metaphorically and lessons in learning to live with and through environmental difficulties. We require, in short, lessons in forging identity from processes of erosion. Finally, and thirdly, the coins remind us that multiple pasts simultaneously exist and, and exert pressure on the, on the present and for the future. Not all of these pasts will be equally familiar or equally uh, recognizable. Sometimes the past isn't difficult to recognize at all. On my last uh, trip to the coffee shop to, to buy my daily caffeine, I found another coin in the dirt, but this coin was not a Yugoslav dinar. It was the coin you see here, a Croatian kuna, which was exactly the same as those in my pocket, other than the patina of rust that had, uh, that had been produced by its exposure to the elements. Now, I could have kept this kuna uh, in my pocket and used it later, perhaps even used it to buy my coffee that day. But instead, I decided to uh, put it with the dinars in a single collection as a representative of another past, a more recent past that will continue into the present and future. Again, it's important to remember that not all pasts are as dissimilar or exotic or unknown as they might seem. Finally, and conversely, we find that some pasts are entirely illegible, not open to interpretation in the present. Here you see yet another coin that I found in this dusty lot. It's been corroded, rusted beyond recognition, whether it's a kuna, a dinar, or perhaps even some earlier uh, difficult to recognize currency is impossible to say. The past is not always recuperable in the present or for the future, and we must take this to heart as well. As we endeavor together collectively to construct a mutual dwelling place in the future of the 2020s and beyond, we must take these multiple pasts that I've discussed, both familiar and exotic, both salvaged and rejected as our building blocks and our templates. Futures under construction are inseparable from the pasts that continue to persist, sometimes literally under constructions.